Now let's have this problem for example number 2. And compared to problem number 1, this problem doesn't have evaporation. So if you would think of the equipment that has been used in this process, then you might be saying that this could be a Swenson Walker crystallizer. So the balance would be very easy. You just have the feed and then these are the crystals and then you have the liquor. You can also add another stream for water which is the cooling water. You can add an arrow and then it should go out of this equipment. Now this is just for um, additional design but you can just um, remove that and just leave the uh, main streams that you need because technically um, we don't need that if we're computing for this um, yield but maybe if we compute for the heat balance then maybe we'll be using that but uh, for now let's just stick with this now let's start by identifying the given and it says here that a feed is 10,000 pounds so we have a feed that is equal to 10,000 that's pound mass and then it is fed at 130 degrees Fahrenheit and it contains 40, 47 pounds ferrosulfate per 100 pounds water so I'll just be giving this X sub F so that is the fraction of ferrosulfate in the solution of the feed so I'll just use 47 plus 100 in this case so in that way I've um, minimized the um, the things that I need to write so this gives me strictly the value of the fraction of the ferrosulfate on the solution that's just simply taking the mass of the ferrosulfate and then dividing that by um, the mass of water given and then you add the given mass so this is always obtained by assuming that we have 100 pounds of water that is available okay and then this is cooled to 80 degrees fahrenheit so it is it can be assumed that the outlet of the crystallizer meaning the crystal formation and then this liquor formation would be equal to 80 degrees fahrenheit so let's just add e here that's the um that's t sub l is equal to 80 degrees fahrenheit and we know that this um, T sub L is saturated at 30.5 ferrosulfate per 100 pounds of water. So that's 30.5 divided by 100, 100 plus 30.5. So that's it. That's X sub L. And then the average heat capacity of the feed solution is 0 0.70 PTU per pound um, degrees Fahrenheit. So we could just write somewhere here. CP is equal to 0 0.70 that's BTU because the unit is very important so pound mass and then we have degrees Fahrenheit so that's in English and then we have the heat of solution that is equal to negative 4.4 calories per um, gram so we have H sub S is equal to negative 4.4 kilocalories per gram mole so that's per mole ferrosulfate 7 h 20 so in if you want to convert that in terms of kilojoule then we have 18.4 but we stick with this so that we can convert this in terms of english units so if we'll be converting this in terms of english unit this one is gram gram mole we could just multiply this by 1000 and then divide this to 252.16 calories per one british thermal unit and then convert the denominator in terms of um, kilomole and then div and then convert this kilomole into pound mole this is equal to seven negative seven thousand nine hundred thirteen point four eight six nine that's British thermal unit per pound mass and now that we have this um, heat of solution we know very well that from this expression and assuming infinite dilution and then um, equilibrium condition we know that the heat of crystallization is equal to the positive the negative value of this so that's positive 7913.4869 and then British thermal unit per pound mass now this positive heat of crystallization would imply that during the crystallization process the solution actually um, absorbed heat it's like uh, if the heat of solution is negative then during the dissolution 
hit is released. So it's something like the opposite of the process. Okay, so I think we're pretty much done with all the given and then let's find the yield. Now to start with the computation, we know that the overall material balance for something like a Swenson Walker crystallizer would be that that's F and then is equal to C and then L. So this is the C and then this one's the liquor. And we know that we don't have any evaporation because this is um, a cooling crystallizer. So with this, we have C plus L that's equal to 10,000 pound mass. Okay. And then we proceed with the component balance. So as long as you're given with the fraction of the liquor, I mean the equilibrium solubility, then you'll be able to determine the crystals and then the liquor itself. So we have um, C. And then we know that for an XC, which is um, FeSO47 H2O, we know that the ferrosulfate in this um, compound is just obtained by taking FeSO4 and then leaving the 7H2O. So with this, we need to find the molecular weight. So we add some um, additional information here. The molecular weight of FeSO4 is equal to, so this is what we call the anhydrous crystal, the FeSO4. So we have 151.91, that's gram per mole, and then when we try to take the molecular weight of ferrosulfate, and then we have the hydrate in the form of 7, that's pentahydrate, so we have 7H2O, so that's it, and then this is equal to, so you just have to add um, 7 water in that case, so that will be 277.91, and then we have the gram per mole. So now that we already have the molecular weight, Xc now would be that you take the molecular weight of ferrosulfate only, so that's 151.19, I mean 91, and then you divide this by the total um molecular weight of the hydrated crystal so that's 277.91 okay and this is our this is our x sub c and then for our um for our x sub l we know the man that this x sub l is obtained from this given so that's um 30.5 over 130.5 and then this is equal to 10,000 times the fraction of xf so that is simply equal to 47 over 147 okay so that's that's it for our component balance so we have 47 and then this one is 147 okay so with this we have two equations this one is the first equation this one's the second one so we have two equations to unknowns we can now determine cnl so from this the values are so the crystal is equal to 2748.8526 that is in pound mass and then for our liquor we have 7251.1474 pound mass now this c is given by the crystals that are in pentahydrate form and to be a and the reason why we use this um a hydrate free molecular weight is that we're actually balancing depending on the solution of the feed so we do have this um, solute which is ferrosulfate without any hydrate so when you balance that using this general expression you should be relating your balance with this FeSO4 or the hydrate form or even the hydrated form depending on what is actually entering in your crystallizer so imagine if the feed is ferrosulfate and then pentahydrate so you don't have to like convert this x sub c in the appropriate um, value i mean appropriate unit of the solution or fraction because we're literally taking the same thing in consideration that's why in crystallization if your crystals have different properties you need to take a look at the feed if it enters the a different property or state or composition uh, chemical composition then you will be having another um, process wherein you need to take the values of your um, XC but if XC is um, 
But if if the crystals are crystallized based on the same solute at the feed, then your x would always be equal to 1.0. Thus, from this computation, we could see that the yield or the amount of crystals formed is 2748.8526 pound mass. So the next question is um, make a heat balance. So therefore, we're asked to find the heat capacity or just um, this Q. So we assume that no water is vaporized. So in this case, what we have is um, let's do the enthalpy balance first because uh, that's the first step that we have to do. And to be able to account the enthalpy balance for um, this case, we know very well that um, if water enters um, here at a certain um, temperature and leaves at a different temperature, we know quite well that we have something like F and then plus W is equal to L plus W and then we also have these crystals. So this is the NLV balance because um, I added this W because basically um, this water has um, different states when it enters at a certain temperature and then leaves at another temperature. So we have H sub F and then we have HW1 and then this one is HL and then HL and this one is HL and then HW2 and then this one is HC. We know very well that water enters here and then it leaves at a different temperature. So the change from state 1 to state of this water is W and then HW1 minus WHW2 and then that is equal to L HL minus F HF and then C HC. And if you try to um, separate this in terms of just the difference in these two enthalpies, we know that this is actually the Q which is the sensible heat cooling of water. And that's typically the value of L. And we have LHL minus F, HF, and then C, H, C. Now, uh, this can be um, simplified further when the specific capacity of the liquor is the same as specific capacity of the feed. So we have um, F and then specific capacity of the feed. And then we have the feed minus the liquor temperature that is um, added with the crystal and then the heat of crystallization so this is the um, heat balance obtained when there is no evaporation in our um, system of, of course it's kind of different when it has evaporation but you just have to add um, plus v lambda v in this case because we know that if we add plus v and then hv right here so i just um, like to, something like add e, add it here okay and we just um, remove that in cases we don't have any evaporation. We'll be using this equation and I have to go back with the heat of crystallization right here because um, I remember this one is should be in terms of pound mole, BTU per pound mole. So if we need this in terms of pound mass, we need to convert this further. So we have um, ferrosulfate penta um, heptahydrate as our molecular weight so we need to multiply this with 1 over um, 277.91 pound mole per pound uh, mass so with this um, our um, heat of crystallization should be equal to um, 28.4 uh, 4750 that's in um, British thermal unit per pound mass okay so now let's proceed with the substitution we have Q is equal to the feed that's 10,000 so Q is equal to 10,000 and then we multiply this with 0 0.7 P and then the change in the temperature is has the feed 
being 130 degrees Fahrenheit and then this one is 80 as the liquor you can see it right from the illustration and then we add the amount of crystal um, obtained so that's 2748.8526 and then of course the heat of crystallization being the negative of heat of solution so we have positive 28.4750 so we have 28.4750 in British thermal unit per um, pound mass the answer would be equal to 428 so we have 428,273.5778 that is in British thermal unit this is our answer when we do heat balance around the crystallizer knowing that we don't have any evaporation in this process and you can just uh, take the enthalpy balance and then divide the change in temperature for water right here so we have w uh, whw1 minus whw2 so this is typically the change in um the temperature of water multiplied with its specific heat capacity and it can be expressed in terms of this expression and that is simply equal to q now if you have the data for water and then this temperature change then you can actually find q instead of using this enthalpy balance um, and then we do add some path function to be able to get q and either way you'll be able to get the same answer so that's it for our yield that's the c and then for q that's 428,000 british thermal unit Thank you.